Hi everyone, I'm Connor Mushlet and you're watching Hill TV. At any point during the show, there's a segment you'd like to see. Click on the video on the right side of the screen to go to that segment. First off, Nikki Sindwani sat down with Mr. Eccleston to talk about the state of emissions here at the Hill. After that, Marcus Sass is back with his word of the week. Then, I sit down with some students to talk about the recently resolved changes to the SGA presidency. And finally, we have the Hill Alumni Concert featuring Nana Owusu, Hunter Goffis, our own Mr. Washington, and many more Hill students, faculty, and alumni. If you missed the segment the first time, you can click on it here and go right to it. Or you can watch the full show. The choice is yours. On Friday, we interviewed Mr. Eccleston about the record year in admissions. He discussed parent response to the implementation of iPads and a story about a determined girl who's willing to do anything to come to the Hill School. Uh, the overall statistics for admissions this year and applications and acceptances, uh, Mickey, we had um, Close to 900 applications. We're about in the mid 800s right now. We're we've really cut off the applications because we think we're in good shape. Um, so we didn't per se cut them off, but we're asking for transcripts and test scores. So we really won't get a lot of spring applications. But we only accepted 240 students. So it was about a 30% selectivity rate, which is has improved by about five six percent over the last uh, three or four years. We're typically in the mid to high 30% acceptance rate, and this year it's, it's rated right 30. Headmaster, not really. I mean, Mr. Darty was very supportive of our process and would always look to help. Uh, if you've ever been over here on a Saturday morning, you would see him, and Mr. Lehman's done the same, where he would meet with uh, many families uh, one unique thing that Mr. Lehman did do this year is he called every accepted uh, candidate, which I think is pretty impressive. Uh, emailed a lot of the international students, but, but uh, we heard some great feedback about that. Um, not really. I mean, I think these days most parents expect schools to have technology and I think to have, um, uh, you know, advanced technology. I think. One thing we've tried to, to market, what we've done so far, is um, what, our class, what we're doing in the classroom with the technology. And, and again, as we all know, that our teachers are learning as we go to, and I think we're only going to get better at that, and I think that's something that people are excited that, to hear about. What other boarding schools do, do we cross over with and have applicants apply to? Um, I think a lot depends these days on geography. I think a lot of students like to stay close to home. If it's a mid-Atlantic area boarding applicant, we'll see crossover with Lawrenceville and Petty, St. Andrews and Delaware, Blair a little bit. Um, with the New England schools, it typically it tends to be a lot of the Connecticut schools like Hotchkiss, Choate, Taft, Kent, Westminster. Um, those tend to, to be the, the crossovers in New England. Um, is there an increase uh, in, in students applying to a particular sport? Not really. Um, I have to say one, one coach who's really done a good job to build a program is Mr. Baum with the girls ice hockey. Um, the girls ice hockey has hit, hit sort of a snag in the last couple of years and Mr. Baum has really worked hard to bring a lot of applications uh, to the table uh, from, girl, from, from girl applicants who are ho ice hockey players and he's done a great job of that. We have some funny things that happen from year to year. I, I do think an impressive thing this year, we had a girl who came from China by herself, um, stayed in a local hotel, and then walked three miles to get to the Hill School for her interview uh, in the middle of the winter. <laughs> so we consider that pretty impressive. Um, and uh, you know, it just shows, it, it, it's, it's really actually heartwarming to see students wanting to come to a school like this so badly.
Hello, my name is Marcus Sass. Welcome back to Word of the Week, and this Word of the Week is Lollapalooza. Lollapalooza is an unusual event, thing, or person. For example, I could say, I was at a concert which devolved into a Lollapalooza when some unruly patrons decided to throw a luminescent paint over everyone. Earlier this week, the administration suggested changes in the way that the SGA president was elected in an effort to give female students a better opportunity at gaining the top spot. The administration suggested a new rule that said any candidate running for president needed a running mate of the opposite gender. These two, if elected, would serve as co-presidents. Here are some of the reactions we heard around campus this week. Women have the opportunity to lead if they want to lead. Yes, maybe we could use some more positions, but it's also just the quality um, of the speech and their presentation and just the effort they put forth that makes them the leader. It's not um, a sexist or racist uh, race in SGA or in kind of any leadership position. I mean, I, I don't feel like I'm thought of as a second class citizen at Hill and this whole idea of having co-presidents really kind of makes me feel like I am, just because it makes me feel like I need help to get to the presidency, and I knew if I wanted to run for president, and I, I could do it if I had the right speech, if I had the right ideas, but so far there just hasn't been anyone who's done that yet. Um, by telling girls that they have to run with a guy to basically be a shoe in into SGA is in some sense sexist, I think. Um, the fact that they're doing this so that girls can have a say in SGA and SGA because they think that girls are afraid to run because there's never been a female president is false. If a girl is too afraid to run for SGA, then she shouldn't be in SGA in the first place. By helping girls be members of SGA, I don't think it'll gain them re the respect because people will obviously know that the only reason they were put into SGA is because administration helped them and held their hand. To create two co-presidents is diminishing or getting rid of the fact that there will ever be a female president. Um, in addition to that, by having one male and one female, it's obvious that if they don't think females will ever be able to be the first female president, then how are they going to be respected in that position? Um, of course, I think the only people on SGA are people that should, who, who run and are rightfully elected, but I think this new policy is the best chance a girl has of holding a powerful position in SGA because I don't think girls will vote for another girl. I just think that's the way high school girls work. And I don't think boys at this age respect girls enough to vote for them when they're running against a guy. So I think this is the best chance girls have of being on SGA. I do think uh, that it's healthy to look at changes. And that, that's a difficult thing to do in a school that's been around for 162 years. Uh, but I also think that it's, it's part of what progress is. We call it creative destruction in economics, that, that progress means that some things are going to lose, that some people are going to lose. In a later meeting with Headmaster Lehman, the SGA was directed to develop a plan in the coming year to make the election of the SGA president more accessible to female students.